Welcome back everybody. Are you ready to be really mean to some brand new paint? I am. But first, I'll catch y'all up on what's been going on since we spoke last. So yesterday, I submitted the specs for attempt number two at getting a front bumper rolled and here's what I settled on. So I was operating off of a 62 and a half inch radius last time from my cardboard drawing on the floor and then comment section beneath the last video um, someone posted up that they accessed the cat blueprints for that piece and it specified a 60 inch radius at a finished length of 44 and 5 8 inches long and we were close okay so the 60 inch radius is going to tighten our curve just a little bit so we're going to have a touch more than four inches setback on each cutoff end but i was pretty close with the overall 44 inch measurement that i had settled on turns out 44 and 5 8 so i told them to shoot for a finished cord length of 88 inches that's going to allow me to get two 44 and 5 8 blanks out of that with a few inches on each end just for margin of error and i told them they could even leave that just a touch long if they wanted just to pad things further so We've pretty much got that underway. Now to the painting process. You can see we've started. Actually, we've done quite a bit of work. I got pretty much, it's dark on this side, pretty much the whole underside of the belly pan done already up to the point where I'm happy with it. We spent Behind the scenes episodes number 88 and 89, working out our process to decide how we're gonna take it from that to this, okay? And honestly, we've pretty much perfected it, I think. Setting it up against the fender right there. I think once some of these bare metal blotchy patches just naturally rust in on their own, we're gonna be pretty much a dead ringer to the existing finish that's on this tractor. And it's a lot of work going from solid state coating like this to fully weathered in and darkened and shaded and you know blotted and everything finished like that. It's about three days from the time I laid a paint down, multi-step process to the time it finally looks like I want it to. And we've also done the insides of the lower panels as well. Got the other one over here. Again, pretty good match to that fender right there. The insides of both side irons have been completely covered and we're not going to be doing the weathering in there because they're just gonna be flat up against the faces of these lower panels anyhow. So that's not the world's worst camouflage job. That's just me throwing some multicolored kind of shadows down first that's going to be underneath this really really poor coat or top coat i should say that i'm going to put on so we've done the same thing to this one as well like that so when we start bleaching all that out we're going to have some tones that are going to be coming through toe hook is most of the way there i want to wait until i finish the actual like underside of the belly pan before i actually complete the rest of the weathering and shading and further darkening on this because those are going to have to match. So with the inside of the belly pan done, the goal today is to do the outside. You can see we've got a few pre-staged shadowing effects going on on there. Put those on yesterday so they had plenty of time to set up. So first piece we need to get completely done is going to have to be the belly pan with the tow hook and then we can install that and then everything else we build on top of that. So that's our foundation to grow off of. And I'm also going to hit the other sides of these side irons today. And if I have excess paint to expend, I'll start hitting the outsides of those lower panels, but I'm pretty sure we're gonna run out before we get that far. What are we using for paint? Went to my local paint store. They are a DuPont dealer. Um, I've had very good luck with their products, but this is what we settled on. This is a Nason. It's a fast dry, single stage acrylic enamel and we're not throwing hardeners in here because we don't want to build extra gloss we do not want to give it durability this is kind of a lower end lower quality paint i had it custom mixed to match 
what's on this original 1113 sample right here. And yeah, like I showed you before, that's what it looks like once we spray it. And honestly, it, it's a really, really good base for the weathering that we're trying to do. And yeah, it's something that's going to fade quicker than a higher end paint. It's going to resist abuse <laughs> a lot, a lot worse than a higher end paint. So the whole name of the game is to get it so that it's not shiny, it's not looking new, but it looks absolutely beautiful, just like that. Honestly, I've had more fun doing this so far because for once it's absolute stress-free painting. I've been outside trying to get just perfect, like gloss mirror finishes on sheet metal and bugs are coming in left and right, trying to kamikaze their way right onto that new finish. I don't want anything to even touch it or nick it or hit it until it sets up and it dries. And with this stuff, you just don't have to care. Is it a little too humid outside? Maybe, doesn't, doesn't matter. Uh, is rain coming? Doesn't really matter. A few random water blotch splash patches are gonna just further add to the effect anyway. It's, it's, I've been having so much fun with it, seriously. It's three to four times as much work as just putting down a consistent, shiny, perfect layer of paint. But this is painting I actually want to do because I'm not wound tight as a fiddle string. You can pretty much just have fun with it, do whatever you feel like doing. So let's get started. It's looking good, we got it mixed back up. So how big of a batch do we want to do today? Here's our skill right here. We're supposed to be eight parts paint, two parts reducer. I'm going to um, lighten up the reducer quite a bit because I want this stuff to be thick. I don't want it to flow out of the gun and then lay flat and completely have all the little orange peel humps and dips and everything level out. I want this stuff to come out of the gun thick to end up with like an orange peel or a rougher finish and then stay that way until it sets up enough that it doesn't move. So. We're not going for shiny, we're going for rough in this case. Um, pop it all the way up to three, yeah. We'll do a pretty decent sized batch right off the start. Hopefully we get by with just one. That's the trouble doing smaller batches of stuff like this. You don't want to mix up so much paint that you're throwing it away, you know, so. There's where we want to be with the paint. Reduce it down now. Like I say, we're only going to go about 50% what they recommend. I just want it thin enough to come out of the gun. There we are. Perfect. Strainers in the cup. I like to use these disposable plastic cup liners. They're so much nicer for cleanup. But we'll run it through the strainer, make sure there's no clumps. Let every last drop run out. This stuff's expensive. Well, <laughs> for, for what we're about to do to it, it's not that expensive, but I, I don't want to waste any of it. Get a good seal on top so we don't make too much of a mess. All right, we're ready to go.
Okay, spraying is done. I exhausted just the one batch. It ended up coming out just about perfect, and I had enough paint left to do the um, the other side of both of these. This is such a fast dry stuff. These are the last two that I sprayed, and I can already touch them. But I had enough to do the other side of both of these lower panels. So, oh, that's so much better. I got to dig back at the comment section from time to time, right? <laughs> so. Yeah, this is where you can check your work though, like with the metal work and stuff. When you can get a little bit of a, a shiny reflection, like sighting down that accent line, nice, consistent, are forming right here. Good, crisp, reflecting lines all the way around. That was sound workmanship. So, all right, anyway, yeah, happy with how that metal turned out. Uh, everything was formed well. I burned a little bit of that paint off on a few of the um, fasteners for the belly pan. And both side irons are done, and you can see how we've got, it's a noticeably rougher finish. It's almost sandpaperish right here. We got some orange peel there where it's a little thicker. Again, that's what we were going for. So uneven coatings all around. We can see we have kind of some thinner shadow lines. That's good. Thicker in other spots. That's exactly what we want. Belly pan now. I purposely went very light on the absolute bottom because those are always like polished, shiny anyhow. So... What I did was just worked with the existing kind of rusty finish that was starting on it naturally. Let the metal be the boss. That's There's no more authentic, accurate way to recreate a weathered, rusted finish than to just utilize what it's already wanting to do. So I went heavier on the cleaner patches where that rust hadn't quite crept in yet and just left like some of this, I barely even hit that at all because, you know, this is going to scrape plenty anyway when I'm driving over things. I'm not that worried about it. We hit it a little bit heavier where it kicks up at the back. And we did quite a bit heavier at the front, especially where the front edge curls up because under normal use, that would have been hit by the least amount of things. We also got it a little bit heavier on each curled edge where it comes up to the front. But we also took advantage of that cleaner flatter strip that hadn't really started rusting yet we got a good thick layer there kind of another one there off to the edge lighter there lighter there so we move on to phase two with this stuff we need to start distressing this right away and this will be like the last thing we do to it today because after this it's going to have to set up some more and wait at least until tomorrow before we can move on but I'll show you what the next step of the process is okay Regular mineral spirits, nothing fancy about it. So this is a two-pronged approach. Those mineral spirits are going to further reduce any amount of gloss that this paint does have. So that's going to be a bonus. Plus, this is a fast dry paint. You can already touch it. I mean, it's been literally 30 minutes since I laid this down. It doesn't even feel like it's, like it's new paint, but it is new paint. So you start throwing these mineral spirits on paint that is this fresh, even though it's fast dry, you're going to start removing a quite a bit of it so that's our goal for all of these spots where we want to retain the rust we want to pretty much strip it and clean those and then we're going to significantly lessen the amount of paint that is on the heavier areas where we did apply it so it's just it's another long tedious process but we'll do a patch right here in front of the camera that's easy to see best thing to do is to get it on there let it sit for a minute or two because it is going to start activating it Get it on a good big patch here so it can start working. And I don't ever wipe it off either. I just let it evaporate dry because that's going to further like cloud this finish. So now we just start working the areas where we want to have it as a lesser finish. See how we're pretty much getting it completely off right there but that natural rust that's our best friend that saved us so much work right here because you get all those little dark black spots those little high spots sticking through and then once this uh once this thinner or this these mineral spirits evaporate off those are going to start naturally browning it means most of our work is already done on the bottom of here it's just heavier spot really good so we can thin it reduce the uh, the overall thickness of that layer and you see we're starting to get some brush strokes we can we can just go straight on with it like this because you know what when this thing got would get like scuffed during operation 
it was going to be straight lines back and forth anyhow. So that's just further adding, adding, adding to the effect. Paint fumes are a heck of a thing, you know. Another happy accident we had when I did this to the top side. You can see some of that uh, that bleed through the stuff that ran down, and then just kind of brought some of the the paint layer with it, and then set up on here. That makes some perfect blotchy looking areas, like that little run right there. Perfect. We're gonna leave all that stuff right in place. They were tracking through really well right there, but. Those spirits have had some time to sit on there and work a little bit. Perfect. We're going to lay off on that one. Come over here. Now we're getting down with some brown. Yeah, that's what I wanted to see. And we just go and just blend it off to the edge. Let the color slowly creep in until we go back vertical again. So in a nutshell, that's what we're going to do to this whole thing. This is where I'm on the clock because the rest of the pieces I painted, the more they set up, the tougher it's going to be for me to replicate what I'm doing right here. All right, here's another thing I wanted to show you. We did like the whole top side of it here first, and then we let some of that, some of those mineral spirits just run down the side, and then they sat on there for a while. So now we come back with some fresh spirits on the side, gently go over that, and you can see where all of those those runs are look are turning into vertical marks now. That's just something else that's really hard to recreate. Like if you're trying for that, but you just let gravity kind of take its, you know, do its job. All those details like that start coming into play. Another thing too, don't be afraid to go like really hard on edges. Edges are always the first place that takes abuse anyway. So it's all right to, uh, to get very, very thin on edges, corners, anything else like that. Should have some nice lines showing up in here. I can see it where they want to be. Just starting to come in, see them? Getting some of that rusty or kind of rougher finish starting to come through now. All those little black dots. Perfect. They look like paint runs. That's pretty much what they are, just in reverse. Okay, everybody, I brought you back. This is the last piece. Just about done. Remember, always be mean to edges. As mean as you can be. We don't have to distress most of this here, because, again, that's going to be covered by that side iron, but we want the bottom to at least have a bit of a credible look to it. Mineral spirits and just an old ratty brush works so well on fresh paint. This is not the be all end all of the weathering process either. We're just uh, adding the first layer of distress is really about all it is. Let me get a little more on this edge. There we go. All right. Leave it at that. Okay, everybody, it's several hours later. I moved everything in the shop. I let these set outside for as long as possible in the sunlight today to get a really good bake on that paint, especially since we softened it so much by taking those mineral spirits back over it right after it had pretty much just solidified. And yeah, that does an excellent job of getting down to blotchy, erratic looking patches of metal and getting that paint layer decreased considerably. And you can see we even put like some, um, some curved lines in these areas about where <laughs> the track pads would be coming along and then debris and, and sticks and whatever being drug across those. So just trying to replicate all the wear that would accumulate during normal operation. You can see we've got some of those yellow accents bleeding through, some of the browns bleeding through from some of that shading we put on to start with. And 
Yeah, we got a lot of good edge wear going on on those lower half panels. Everything's looking good on the bottom of the belly pan, and we got some more distressing to do here, a bunch more work to do on the front. Then go and get the tow hook matched to what that's gonna be, and yeah, that was pretty much today's work. That was phase one, which was lay down the paint, and phase two, which was first round distressing the paint. These are gonna have to set for probably 24 hours minimum. I should even go 48 hours, a full two days before I actually start um, doing the darkening. And then we're also gonna like uh, chemically burn that as well to get some of the blotches and further discoloration. And this stuff really needs to have a little bit of a set put on it before we go to phase three and phase four right there. And those two phases take forever. This is hours and hours and hours between what you see right in front of us right here. But that's the beginnings of the process and I'm happy with the way it's been turning out. So it might be two, three days before we get another finished episode put together and get these pieces to where I'm ready to say close enough and we can just let nature take its course from there as far as I'm leaning towards just letting any bare metal naturally rust instead of artificially rusting it i'm still up in the air i might try i have a couple more ideas in my head for that once we get the paint part pretty much to where i want it but we'll cross that bridge when we get there so paint project has begun on 11 13 we're just biding our time until we get a curved piece of metal hopefully it's right next time and we can start or we can finish making that bumper and then we start doing the same paint job to that so that's all i got for you for today thanks for watching everybody more to come